In this video, we're going to be talking about two amplifiers that have gotten a cult status in the doom metal genre. That's the Mad Amp GT120 and the Orange OR120. So today we're going to talk about what makes these amps so different from other 100 watt amps of the time. How they're really similar, but there's some key differences in the circuits that make them both unique and different amplifiers. We'll talk about the master volume versions versus the non-master volume versions, because I see that question come up a lot in forums where people are trying to figure out what is the best for them. And then at the end of this video, I'll leave you a link to a really well done demo from Does It Doom, checking out both of these amplifiers. So we're gonna talk about it and give you something to think about of why these amps sound the way they do, why they're unique. Then afterwards, go check out and see what they sound like. Before we get started, drop a comment below if you know any musicians or bands that use these amps. That way everyone can go check out their albums and hear what these amps sound like on record. If you've got experience with them, let us know what you think. Or if you wanna share some of the history about Mad Amp and Orange and the companies uh, working together at the time and growing, also share that below, I'd really like to see it. And don't forget to subscribe to the Fuzzlord Effects YouTube channel so you don't miss any of the weekly content that we put out. Stop by the Instagram page at Fuzzlord Effects or check out the Patreon page in the description if you want to know more about supporting this channel. Neither of these amps are really high gain compared to today's standards with things like the 5150, but for their time in the 70s, they really were high gain amps that had a really unique sound. And this is kind of from a time before fuzz pedals were as common as they are today. So it totally makes sense that these amps really stood out and a lot of people started getting into them for heavier kinds of music and down tunings and things like that. Something that really made these amps special is they used really high quality components. I know the oranges at the time were using partridge transformers and Fane speakers, which you just put those together with a high powered 120 watt tube amp and you're going to move some air and it's gonna be a really fun amp to play. So both of these amps run four EL34 tubes in the power section and run about 120 watts, really powerful amps. Solid state rectification on the power supply running at a really high voltage, just makes these really powerful, very loud amps. But the preamp of these amps is a lot different from other 100 watt amps that we usually see. The, both of these preamps use two 12AX7s and something that's really interesting to me about these amps is that they both use a cathodyne phase inverter. Most big 100 watt amps are using long tail pair phase inverters like an old Fender Bassman or JTM 45, things like that. But these amps use cathodyne phase inverters which just have their own unique sound and their own kind of pros and cons to them. One of the most popular amps that people still play today that has that phase inverter is the Fender 5E3 Deluxe, which uh, they have a really cool distortion tone. The kind of Neil Young overdriven sound comes from that. And these amps also have that similar kind of quality. The preamps, although they look really similar, like on the face plate, because they have a James tone stack that's a bass and a treble tone control, it's a tone control that works really good and it is part of the Mad Amp and Orange sound. Uh, they also feature a gain control and then the Orange uses a FAC, Mad Amp calls it a depth control. What that is is a rotary control that selects different capacitors that are in line with the audio and they remove bass to help kind of tame the circuit. It's another one of those really unique things about both of these amplifiers that set them apart from anything else happening at the time. So that's how they're similar. The, the power sections are similar. The overall function of the amps are very similar. They share a tone stack that's almost identical with different values in it. So these are both really great sounding amplifiers. I think the orange lends itself to a little bit more of an overdrive sound versus the green Mad Amp GT120. When it's cranked, sounds very fuzzy to me. So now that we've talked about some of the things that are similar with these two amps that are unique compared to other amps, that's the, uh, you know, the 120 watt output section being driven by the cathodyne phase inverter, and it's a pretty bare bones preamp section. Most uh, 100 watt amps have three preamp tubes so they can run the long tail pair phase inverter, um, but both of these amps just did it in a more simple and stripped down a way that still sounds really good. So now that we've talked about that, let's switch over and talk about some of the things that make these two amps different from each other, even though they're kind of the same building blocks. 
So the Orange OR120, if we check out a schematic, I'll leave a link in the description to where you can learn more about this stuff and check out these schematics. On the Orange amp, the basic topology is we have our signal going into one tube gain stage. It comes out of that amplified, and then we're going to run it into the James tone stack, the bass treble tone stack, and then into the gain control before it goes to the next um, 12AX7 gain stage. After that gain stage, we have the FAC control, which is the rotary control that removes bass, that kind of really changes the distortion tone of the amp and uh, how much clean headroom and stuff like that it has. From there, it's going to go into the phase inverter, the power amp, and of course there's negative feedback and all that kind of stuff. Um, small value changes between these two amps make a big difference, so I definitely don't want to give you the idea that these are the same amps, even though they're very similar, because I don't want to uh, oversimplify everyone's work. The Madam GT120, same kind of building blocks, but it's set up a little bit differently. On the Mad Amp, after the first gain stage is where the depth control is located with the gain control. And then after the second gain stage, we're going into the two-band James tone stack, the bass treble tone stack. So even though a lot of the other stuff is really similar and, you know, the basis of the depth control FAC uh, works incredibly similar, on the green amp, Right after the first gain stage, we're going to have the depth control, which is going to add or remove bass from the circuit with our gain control. And then after the next gain stage, we're going to do our EQ. The orange does the gain and the EQ after the first stage, and then the depth control after the second stage, the FAC. So a good way to think about that is if you were stacking pedals on your pedal board, let's say you have a gain and an EQ pedal, uh, kind of imagine how they would sound different if you had the gain pedal first and then the EQ and then you swapped them. So that is one of the biggest differences in these two different amps that I think really changes the way that they sound and the way that they feel when you're playing them. All right, let's talk about master volume versus non-master volume because this is something that I see in the Mad Amp forums on Facebook like every day is that if you, the classic amps did not have a master volume, they were incredibly loud, had a lot of headroom, and they didn't start breaking up until, I mean, you were shaking the walls and stuff like that, you know what I mean? Versus the master volume amps have a master volume control at the end of the circuit, so it's a lot easier to turn it down and like at a reasonable volume, get like the dope smoker sound uh, that sleep has, you know what I mean? Like big blown out amp sound, really distorted, without having to like literally have the whole house or the practice spot or the venue shaken. So if you were thinking about getting one of these, I would really put some thought into if you wanted the master volume version versus the non-master volume version. If you want to be able to get that full sound of the distortion that's in the amps um, at more reasonable volumes, I would definitely recommend getting the master volume version. But if you're someone that plays really loud, you like using fuzz pedals and stuff like that, you're playing your amp like at full volume with drums and bass and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of people I've talked to uh, have mentioned that the master volume versions don't seem to have as much headroom. And uh, Mad Amp themselves recommends getting the non-master volume version if you really want that headroom. So. I don't think there's one that's better than the other. For me, I would definitely go with a non-master volume because I like clean amps and using pedals and just having that headroom. But if you want to record at home or play quietly, I don't want to say quietly because it's still a 100 watt amp, but at a more reasonable volume, but still get that uh, saturated gain fuzz tone from in the amp, you would probably want to go with the master volume version. I know that was a really basic explanation of these two different amps, but I hope it was helpful. Uh, I definitely don't want to make these videos overly complicated. I want to keep it fun and easy to follow. So my apologies if I've oversimplified anything. These are both really unique amps, different companies that have done great work. But now that you've got a little bit to think about with what makes these amps so unique, I want you to check out this demo from Steve Reese over at Does It Doom. He played both of these amps side by side and did a really great demo. So go check that out, see what you think. Maybe that'll help you decide which one uh, you like. 
or maybe you can just kind of think about the EQ versus the gain control placement and the FAC depth control thing when you're watching that demo, and it'll give you a little bit to think about. Also, aside from the amps, there is quite a few different pedal companies out there that make really awesome uh, emulations of these amps. For example, Fuzzlord makes the FET 120. Uh, there's a demo on the channel. Magic Pedals does the DA120 that was originally designed and built by Dunwich Effects. Uh, and if you know other companies that have done pedals that recreate the sound of that, drop a comment below. I'm always curious to check out new stuff. I'm Jason from Fuzzlord Effects. I really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video. And I also want to give a big thank you to all of the Patreon supporters' names that we're running on the screen right now. All these people help support this channel through the Patreon page that is linked in the description. Big special thanks to Veyu Slavic, one of our producers, Illuminati Guitars, Eastwood Guitars, Obscura MFG, JML Guitars, and Dunnable Guitars. I'll talk to you in the comments, and I'll see you in next week's video.